Okay, we're live. Um, hey, hi guys. Um, welcome to our uh, webinar. Uh, just to start off with, uh, maybe we should wait for a few minutes and uh, see if more people want to join. And then maybe in a couple of minutes, we'll uh, start. Um, is That's okay, right, Chitij? For two minutes, we can wait for two minutes. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Let us just join. Should we start? I think uh, we'll see more people might join in uh, eventually. Uh, to start with, uh, hello, hi guys, welcome to the webinar. Uh, today we are specifically taking uh, questions around uh, the upcoming batch and uh, upcoming batch of Scalar Academy. And if you have any specific questions, please uh, post them in the comments and we'll take them individually. Uh, to start with, uh, let me take you a little, uh, tell you a little bit about Scalar Academy. Uh, we are um, we're part of the interview bit group. Uh, it's a uh, Sailor Academy. We offer a six months online program uh, for uh, software engineers and developers to help them, uh, you know, be uh, <clears throat> perfect their skills in uh, the current needs of the industry. Uh, we, I have Shitij with me who works as an instructor with us uh, and uh, I'd like him uh, it's best if he kind of shares uh, what is it that we do at Scalar and, you know, um, why is it helpful for people to be part of this course? Uh, Shitej, uh, over to you. Right. Hello, everyone. So uh, as Simon said, I'm Shitej. I'm also working as instructor in the Scalar Academy. So first of all, what is the Scalar Academy? So Simran has already thrown some light on it, right? So this is an online learning platform where we teach all the skills that are necessary to become a good software engineer. What are these skills? So these skills compose of uh, problem solving that has data structures and algorithms, then high level design, low level design, some of the basic computer science concepts like designing schemas for system, right? DBMS, computer networks, operating systems, and then MVC frameworks, the basic of development, right? So these are the things that we are going to teach in this program. Uh, the timeline of the program is such that we spent three months on teaching data structures and algorithm and developing uh, a quality of problem solving inside it. Okay, so the focus uh, in the teaching is based on developing the intuition to solve a new problem. It's not like uh, how to solve this problem. It's like how to approach a new problem. Okay. Then after completing the data structure and algorithm part, we move on to basic computer science concepts like DBMS uh, operating system, computer network, then we move on to low level design. In low level design, we teach all the OOPs concepts in detail. Uh, then we also talk about UML diagrams. Uh, we teach some of the design patterns in detail. Uh, we teach schema design. And then finally, using all these things, we teach how actually you can design a system. Okay, so uh, designing systems like Book My Show or Ola, uh, Ola Uber, right? 
uh, or split wise so we take all these questions and we make you design these systems yourself using all the concepts that have been taught in the class after low level design we focus on high level design so high level design means the complete architecture of the system where we cover scaling sharding uh, consistent hashing caching so all these topics are covered so uh, till now all all the students are together right but after covering high level design based on your preference based on what you want to do in future which job role you want to take in future we split the batch Uh, into two parts. One is a backend specific stream. The other is a frontend specific stream. In the backend specific stream, we will dive deep into multi-threading uh, MVC architectures, and we'll cover one of the MVC architecture that is in demand in detail. We'll cover how to write REST APIs, what are ORMs, how we can use them, uh, and then we basically make you build a product using all these concepts of a scalable product and you will also be able to deploy that product on aws okay in the front end stream we teach javascript uh, in detail we go into details of javascript core javascript and then we pick one javascript framework that is in demand by the industry uh, for example we can teach react or node js whichever is in demand and then we make also make you build a project on it so like this is the complete outline of the course uh okay that was really helpful um shitej we going to start taking some questions that have come uh, on linkedin as well as uh, um youtube i thought we should start with this one it come on linkedin and it's uh, um it's a very basic question but i'm assuming a lot of people will have it it the it is uh, by a guy called neera chauhan and he asks has asked that why do i need to clear an exam and why is it mandatory to be part of the academy okay 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 so uh, neera the thing is that if if we are if we want to teach all these concepts in 6 months right it is mandatory to have certain prerequisite knowledge to take this course because if you are at level 0 maybe we cannot cover all these things in 6 months maybe we require 2 uh, to 3 years to cover all these stuff right this uh, all these stuff that i talked about this is not a small thing right this is not just a cake walk so it requires time like learning is a slow process so there is something some knowledge that is prerequisite for this course and uh, we take the test just to make sure that whoever is taking this course has that prerequisite and if you don't have that prerequisite then this course might not be beneficial for you right if you attend the class and if you are not able to understand what is going on there in the class then that won't be helpful for you right maybe in future we will be launching some of the course uh, which will start from zero but this course uh, this is based like this is focusing more on the interview preparation so we can say that uh, this requires some prerequisite and to test whether you have those knowledge or not we have to take the test that was helpful i think uh, there is another guy called anurag i'll show the question on the screen as well he is preparing uh, he's prepared some basic concepts and he wants to understand if that's sufficient uh, considering there are only couple of days left okay okay so anurag is saying that he has prepared basic array concepts and some basic algos is that sufficient okay so uh, guys in the uh, in the entrance test you will be having all the basic types of questions on Okay. Now that the key there is to actually recognize in the test, you will actually have all types of question. One question will also be a difficult question. Okay, one question will be a very very basic uh, kind of question where you just have to do some manipulation on uh, a string or an array. So judging the level of the question, that is going to be the most trickiest part. Okay, so I would suggest you guys that if you have prepared certain topic, then when you uh, open the test. first of all try to visit all the problems and figure out which all problem lie in your domain okay so first attempt those problem instead of wasting your time on the hard problem so that judgment is going to be very important which problem is easy and which problem is hard for you if you are able to pick a easy problem and if you are able to solve that then maybe you can get through uh, the test right but if you waste your time on other problems that you have not covered then maybe uh, you might fail right um there's another one i think it's a very valid question by nimesh a lot of a lot of us feel that you know the um the time crunch and not uh, you know maybe a little bit of pressure 
uh, and how do you you know do well in that so i think maybe you should take nimish's question it's quite uh, i don't know how maybe if you have any advice that we can give them okay okay the genuine fear of time box coding test okay okay so uh, one one very basic uh, practice that i have actually done that i also suggest most of my students to do uh, is to practice that thing. okay if you fear uh, solving problems in a time bound environment you should practice that till it becomes very easy for you now the question is how to practice for that right so this is very easy we have been doing this in school while we used to attend the mock test right take a problem okay take a watch set a timer set a timer of 20 minutes and attempt the problem okay after you attempt the problem in 20 minutes see whether you are able to solve it or not okay now after those 20 minutes have passed now switch back to a relaxed environment okay now remove the clock don't see the solution switch back to a relaxed environment and now try to see if you are able to solve that problem or not if you are not able to solve that problem even in the relaxed environment then maybe you can see the solution and figure out what all things you are missing but if you are able to solve the problem in the relaxed environment then you should figure out what are the things that you were missing while you were doing it in the time constraint environment make a note of those things then pick another problem and now you have some points right you you already have some points on which you fail while solving the problem in a time constraint environment right so now make sure that you are doing those things for this problem okay then again attempt the problem in a time constraint environment if you are not able to do if you are not able to solve that again uh, do it in a relaxed environment and make note of things that you were missing while you were having a clock in front of you okay you can also use uh, interview pick platform for practicing because there we have a clock and the score of the problem that you get that gets reduced uh, that is the, the score that you get is inversely proportional to the time that you spend in the clock uh that i think was helpful i think there's another similar question on the lines um maybe if there's anything else you want to add to this maybe um you could or maybe the previous advice is enough if you could just share okay i can solve the problems in brute force but i'm not able to find optimized solution on all questions any tip for okay okay so that this actually i i think is uh is a very basic problem that most of the students face right uh now when if you are able to uh, apply the brute force solution to get to the optimized approach again there are certain things that you need to know okay because for all the questions you cannot uh, reach till the optimized approach without having certain type of knowledge for example if you are able to optimize if you are trying to optimize a backtracking problem that have uh, overlapping sub problems then you need to know how dynamic programming works right so you need to know the knowledge of dynamic programming if you are uh, or if you are trying to optimize a searching problem in a sorted searching space then you know then you need to know how binary search works right so first try to gather the knowledge of these algorithms okay now if you already know these algorithms and you are not able to implement them in the problem then it it's totally based on the practice okay you can improve this thing by practice solve more and more problems so uh, if if you notice or if you have seen this that problem solving is nothing but pattern matching okay there are different types of problems which are different patterns and there is a fixed amount fixed number of patterns if you have visited all the patterns then when you see a new problem you can match uh, which pattern this problem belongs to you can apply that same set of rules and you can solve that problem okay so first make sure that you actually know all these optimization techniques okay and then solve more and more problems on these techniques okay so you need to know binary search you need to know dynamic programming uh, you need to know certain other things that are a little advanced than these okay but make sure that you are practicing these things uh thanks shitesh that's interesting this is another question um uh it's come on linkedin and uh, there are two people who have similar questions not similar questions but uh, both of them are working and they want to understand one of them is vikash the other one's called uh, ashwarya uh, their question is one uh, 
as and when they do uh, clear the test and they're passed a part of scalar academy is the course structure different for people who are working professionals or uh, if and also you know is it uh, convenient for them in the sense that you know time wise will they be able to do it while they are doing a full time job Uh, i think these are interesting questions because i'm assuming a lot of people would want to know uh, if they can do it while they're still um, you know taking a full time employment right right, right. so uh, let let me take all the questions one by one so the first question was that like, is there a difference in the course structure uh, that is for the experienced professional right so uh, this batch that we are going to launch uh, right now is going to be for experienced professionals only right so this course is specially designed for experienced professionals uh, the other batch that we will be launching after this will be for college students that will be different right so for, when we talk about the experienced professionals we focus a lot on the design part because designing a scalable system is very important if you are experienced if you have at least 2 years of experience right so we focus a lot on low level design we focus a lot on high level design and we make you build system we make you uh, actually design a system host it on aws so that you can actually show it to someone that you have built this system and scale it okay so we'll provide all the infrastructure we'll we'll be providing all the skills to do that so this is the difference between the uh, experienced course versus the uh, college student course then the next question was that uh, will it be possible for you like how much time you will have to commit and will it be possible for you to do the course uh, with a sufficient or uh, with satisfaction given that you are also doing a job right so for that we have structured the course in such a way that we don't have daily classes we have classes on alternate days okay so classes start at 9 pm and we assume that most of you uh, will be free by 9 pm Okay, it 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 might be possible that some of you are having night shift and you are free during the daytime, but you are not free during the night time. So to cope with that, we also provide the archive video of the class. Okay, so all the videos of the class will always be available. You can watch them always. You can speed them up and watch them. Okay, everything, uh, all the course content will be available to you. So even if that time doesn't suit you, uh, you can watch. the video but we recommend to attend the live class so that you can clear your doubts okay so uh, we have the classes on alternate days and the class timing is scheduled such that most of the people can attend the class then we give you an assignment and homework so all the concepts that are that are taught in the class based on those concepts we give you a set of questions uh, in assignment as well as homework so you have one complete day to solve those problems okay so in the next day there is uh, a ta stand up session okay so now a ta is a teaching assistant uh, teaching assistant who are working in different companies but they are really really good at coding they will be helping you with the implementation details of the problem okay so we have that ta stand up session and in that ta stand up session if you have any doubt related to the implementation of the concept or if you are facing any issue in coding if you are getting any type of errors you can clarify all those doubts okay so most of the times we we have actually had two batches of experienced professionals and for most of the students uh, the time concern has not been an issue because the classes were on alternate days and they uh, had sufficient time to solve the problems i think that will uh, bring a lot of uh, interest from people who are already working uh, the next question comes from uh, raminder singh he uh, wants to know that if it, is it just the test score that will help him qualify for the uh, uh, batch or are they are we you know uh, mm -hmm. analyzing other things like you know resume their profiles on coding websites etc what is your take on that right that that, that is a really uh, good question raminder so guys the test is for is just to test whether you have reached uh, at that level so that you can take this course or not right now it might be possible that it, that is not your day okay you uh, that is just an unlucky day for you and you could not do bad good in in this set but maybe you have done really good in code chef or code courses or top coder right you are a really good coder but uh, that was not your day so in such cases if you have a uh, really strong coding profile right then we will consider you even if you have spoiled the test 
okay but if you have done coding practice on other sites if you have really good scores there if you have a good really good rating in other sites then also we will consider you resume does not hold a lot of weightage why because the whole idea of scalar academy is to provide education quality education to all the students uh, like irrespective of, of their college right any student whether he is from tier 3 college college tier 2 college or he is not even in a college okay we want to provide quality education to all of us to all of you right so resume doesn't matter but if you are good at coding then maybe that thing will matter okay that matters only if you have spoiled the test okay um the next question i'm taking is from linkedin uh, there are two people who are still uh, there's one guy is called rahul and there's another guy called utkarsh both of them are still in their college uh, one of them is in the third year the other one's doing masters in data analytics and uh, their question is one if they're doing data analytics is this course helpful for them and two is the uh, you know when is a fresher specific batch starting where for it will be helpful for the two of them who they, might, they don't have work experience right so uh, the fresher uh specific batch uh, will start probably uh in april and or uh, may uh like the next batch that we are going to launch is going to be a fresh specific batch now the second question that if you are doing data analytics will this course be helpful for you or not so uh, in this course we don't teach anything uh, specifically related to data analytics okay but all these things that we are teaching problem solving in design uh like whether you are in data analytics or you are in data science doesn't matter right these things are something that every computer science student should know so in that way it will help you but uh, to be specific we won't be teaching any technology or any skill specifically related to data analytics okay um the next question is uh, again i'm taking one from linkedin um the question is by raghav and his question is uh, how many questions are there in the entrance test and is there any kind of uh, you know standard cut off that uh, you guys have what is the evaluation process like okay okay so uh, raghav there will be uh, five questions five coding questions uh, four to five coding questions in the test the level of the questions will be from easy to medium uh, there will also be one uh there can be one hard question just to separate out the outliers okay uh there might also be some mcqs just to check your knowledge uh in basic math okay so uh, you can also check out the sample test that is there in the uh, website you can attempt that and check uh, where you stand currently uh this question is by ragwinder and he wants to understand the most common section of ds and algo uh, that helps them qualify okay okay so uh, ragwin the most common sections uh, for uh, the test are one sorting you should be familiar with sorting algorithms you should be able to solve different types of structures or classes based on uh, some of the attributes okay Uh, you should be familiar with basic data structures like LinkedIn uh, link lists. Okay, uh, you should be familiar with basic searching algorithms. Okay, Th these are very very basic things uh, on which the questions will be based on. And you should also be good with maths, basic maths, number theory, logarithms, uh, calculating the time complexities. Okay, very easy questions will be there in the MCQs. So if you are able to do or if you are able to solve these problems. uh then you can make sure it uh the next question is by sai krishna he comes from electronics background and i think his uh, query might be relevant for a lot of people who want to move their streams into um, computer science so if you could take this up uh, shitesh right so sai krishna is saying that i have a electronics background with software experience in python and c given that the course is for a short duration will it help me in picking up the unknown concepts like dbms system uh, okay so sai krishna uh, see the thing is that if you haven't uh, if you haven't been taught these things before it will be a little hard but in past we have had students 
who have been from chemical engineering background or civil background and they are currently working in amazon and microsoft okay so it is totally possible it totally depends on your aptitude it totally depends on your will to gain knowledge okay so uh, just appear for the test if you are able to qualify for the test you are you can definitely do it okay um the next question i think might also be similar they want to know if uh, you know knowledge of programming language is essential you know for the course maybe or even when you want to apply later uh, shethaj if you take it right right so is it necessary to know c++ or java is okay like do them okay so uh, if you are talking about this course if you know any of the language c c++ java ruby python if you know any language if you are comfortable in coding uh, in any language then that is enough okay you need to know at least one language you need to know how to write workable code in at least one of one of these languages when you talk about companies okay almost all the companies prefer uh, engineers who can write code in java okay there are like most of the companies prefer engineers who can write code in java so if you know java you are at the safer side okay good companies or good product based companies like google uh, amazon facebook for them language doesn't matter okay if you if you are able to write code in c c++ java python doesn't matter the only thing that they require is how good you are at problem solving and are you good at design the the only two things that they require from you no matter which language you select you should be able to write an optimized solution for the given problem okay so if you know java or if you know c++ uh you are on the safer side that's enough for the course as well as for the company uh this next question is also being asked by a couple of people and they want to know what is the batch strength of the upcoming batch do we have a number in mind and how does it work okay okay how many seats okay so uh there there is there isn't any fixed number of seats okay but uh given the situation that uh, given the current situation Uh, given that most of the students have time right now, and we can utilize this time to gain more knowledge, uh, the strength of the batch will definitely will be higher than the previous batches that we have launched. So uh, this time you have a higher chance of getting selected. But uh, the evaluation is uh, is based on your performance. Okay, so. it it isn't like we have a certain number of seats and we have to fill all the seats it it doesn't work like that we see if you are a quality candidate we will consider you even if uh, the predefined number of seats is already filled but if you have performed really well we will pick you okay so uh, just don't uh, don't get distracted by how many seats are there just assume that there are enough number of seats to be selected okay and prepare well uh thanks shitej i'm taking a couple of questions from linkedin now um they are slightly generic in nature but one of the common questions that are coming up is uh, what are the more popular programming languages for 2020 like is there any trend are companies bent towards a particular language uh two three people have asked this question so if you could maybe um take this up this is your experience right right, right. so uh, guys uh, i would say that having the knowledge of basic thing is you know okay uh, the thing is uh, even if there is a technology that is trending right now tomorrow it will get replaced by some other technology okay so don't focus on a specific technology instead of that focus on the skill of learning new thing okay so if you know uh, a certain language you should always be open to learn new thing okay don't get stuck to uh, a certain type of technology or, or a certain language always have a growth mindset always keep yourself open for new things okay and if if i talk about the current trend uh, there is no new language that is coming uh, java is java and python are again the most used languages and uh, some of the like monolithic services are being written in ruby uh, they are written in python but uh, the micro services are still preferred in java Okay. Uh, next question is by Tanishka Agarwal. Um, she wants to understand if the questions, uh, maybe the structure of the questions, will they be just comparative programming or will they be? Uh, 
uh, okay so uh, tanisha the questions will be coding questions you have to write workable code you have to get them uploaded okay so you, you can say that they are based on competitive programming they bear you have uh, an id and you write the code that should pass some of the given test cases right test cases will also be of different types there will be some basic test cases then there will be some test cases to check uh, whether your code is optimal uh, uh, as per the time complexity there there will be some test cases to check whether your code is optimal memory wise right so there will be different types of test cases that your code should pass so you can say that this is based on competitive okay uh, a lot of people seem to be asking this question uh, maybe if you want to take this up people want to understand if they can maybe just attempt four questions and uh, pass okay. it i don't know how okay how many questions do i need to solve okay so uh, there will be at least five questions in the test okay one question or uh, one of those question will be a slightly hard problem okay so uh, maybe you can leave that problem but apart from that uh, the more you solve the better the chances are okay again there is no such uh, no such limit on the number of questions uh, or there is no such type of uh, uh, like cut off on the number of questions that you are solving so try to solve as many questions as you can don't think that you have if you have solved two three questions that it's time for you to end the test okay solve as much as you can because if someone is solving more questions than you then maybe you will lose the seat uh there's another question uh, which is also being asked by a lot of people it's slightly similar on the lines but uh, considering the kind of situation we are in with internet you know may or may, you know you might have uh, faulty lines how would you uh, if you could take this question it will i'm assuming help a lot of people out there uh what will be time of entrance test okay so uh, i think the entrance test will be open for a duration of uh, is 12 hours you can verify it uh, in the uh, scalar home page so uh, it, it's not like that you have to start it at a particular time and you have to finish it uh, so if you have started it then there is a duration of 5 hours but you can start it any time in the given day okay so it it begins it it begins at a certain point of time then you can start it any time after that and you get 5 hours to solve the test so make sure that you only start the test when you have a good internet connection with you um the next question is again on the test pattern um probably you already answered some of it in case uh, there's anything you want to add there Uh, okay so uh, deepak is asking whether there will be coding questions or objective okay so deepak both type of questions will be there there will be five coding questions there will also be some mcqs okay so these mcqs will be based on basic math number theory logarithms and time complexity okay you will have to figure out the time complexity of the given code and all the level is going to be easy So just practice, just brush up your basic math before you appear on the test. Uh, thanks, Shatej. I'm. Um, I have uh, some questions on LinkedIn uh, that I want to take to. They are uh, more from once you've already cleared the test and are part of Scalar. Uh, there's one question that uh, Dhiraj has asked, which says that. Uh, do we if i want to be a full stack developer does that help me or is there going to be focus only on front end or you know you specialize in back end so uh, how i mean what is how is right. it that we will handle it right so that that uh, a very relevant question uh, so the stream that i talked about okay one of the stream is going to be back end the other uh, stream that is not specifically a front end stream that is a full stack stream okay so because when we talk about uh, the full stack because you already have learned when you reach at that point you have already learned low level design you have already learned how to design the schemas you have already learned how to design the architecture of a system in the hld classes uh, and then in those front end specific classes we talk a lot about javascript and how to build uh, optimized front end optimized systems and how to also connect them 
uh, to is backend and how can you write the backend api we also cover basics of backend api there right so uh, that is going to be a full stack course if you want to be a full stack developer that is going to be a very very good course for you okay um the next question again i'm taking from linkedin uh, it also is to do with once you're part of scaler academy um it's a slightly long question uh, but two of them have asked similar questions basically there uh, uh, we are a six months program but uh, how long do the students uh, have access to the videos that we have and the content that is there on the website for instance one person has said that you know uh, what if i was to go on site while i'm working and i don't you know uh, i need a little more time to uh, complete the course so what is the timeline that uh, we have you know is it just 6 months can they extend their access to the um, uh, content if you could take that right right right, right. so uh, there is a thing is the uh, the course length is for 6 months right so we will try to cover all the things in 6 months but uh, our past experience has been such that because of some reasons because of repeating some of the classes because of also having some remedial classes in between uh, the course get extended from 6 to 7 months but that being said all the content all the archive videos all the problems that we are giving you in the course that will stay with you throughout your life okay so the course length is for 6 months the live classes will go on till 6 months or 7 months but the content will be with you throughout your life we we are not going to remove the access uh, to to view the videos or to solve the problem also the referral thing will also be there throughout your life okay so uh, we promise you a job paying uh, higher than a certain amount right paying higher than a certain x amount even if you get a job uh, that is paying you more than that we'll keep referring you okay let's say you join a job after 6 months you want to change your job you can again come back to us without any charge we'll help you find another job okay so all these things will be uh, with you throughout your life thank you tej this one's uh, by this guy called t2 nadar it's a quite a specific question um i if you could maybe uh, help him understand if if he is right for him to join the course uh okay okay so you want to get into companies like power research okay uh i am from a tier 3 college okay so first of all you talk college doesn't matter okay if, if you get into a scalar academy then your college does not matter all the companies in which we are referring you the only thing that they are looking in your resume is that you are a student of the scalar academy okay now no matter whether you have done your engineering from iit bombay or from a tier 3 college they are not going to look into that they will only focus on the thing that you have done uh, a course from scalar academy okay so you don't need to worry about your college uh now talking about uh fintech companies like tower research yes so we have had students uh who have got into some of these companies so uh, we will be referring you into these companies and we will also have some special classes so what uh, we do is after the course is completed uh, we also have certain classes on some topics that are being asked in some specific types of company okay so for example as you have said that fintech companies uh, will like to hire really really good coders right because they are looking for low lat latency coding right so we we have some content specially designed for company preparation also so if you want to get uh, into these types of company this course will definitely help you uh there's another there's a question by anoop uh, he wants to understand if 6 months is enough to cover Uh, all the topics mentioned and uh, you know referrals and getting a job um, i know you already addressed it that you know it's not necessarily limited to 6 months but maybe if you could elaborate a little bit uh, it might help uh, create some more clarity on this right 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 so that that's a good question right so anup i think your question also explains the need of having a good test right because for covering all these things in a, a very short duration of time also requires lot of prerequisites 
so that's why we have the test okay and we'll make sure that the things are done uh, in six months so we have actually designed the course uh, in such a way and this uh, this has been done uh, like there is a research that backs the uh, the structure of the course so the structure of the course is such that we, we teach you a concept we make you solve problems that are based on those concepts that are strictly based on those concepts the next phase we make you solve the problems that are uh, a higher level of the concepts that we have taught right so in this way uh, you actually learn how to learn okay so in the first three four months uh, the learning process or the learning curve is really really high okay after that when we come to design or when we come to uh, the mvc part uh, if like if those things are being taught only by theory then this time is not enough right but we will make you do things so that your learning process is faster right it is accelerated so we'll make sure that if not in 6 months all the things are covered in 7 months or 7.5 months and we have done this in parts so we can say that we are able to do this now talking about the reference reference will start as soon as we cover high level design okay now uh, you can appear for the interview so you can also not appear for the interview so that is totally your choice uh, if you think that you don't want to uh, you only want to appear for the interviews that uh, interviews for the companies that are asking dsl go and design then maybe you are ready for the interviews if you think that you want to appear for startups that will also focus on developing a, uh, a product in the interview then maybe you should wait for that so then a referral for you will start only after the complete course is uh, done okay uh we have a couple of questions on referrals uh, one i think you've already answered on how soon the referrals will start uh mm -hmm. the other one just now is basically on how do we compute the ctc what is it depend on how do we promise so maybe if you could take us through a little bit on the referral program uh, that we have it might uh, ease the minds of some people who are wanting to join okay 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 so the question is what will be the range of ctc will it depend on how much one has work experience or only current ctc uh, okay so the <coughs> the ctc that we promise that depends on lot of things uh, we'll also see your performance in the first uh, five six days or the first few uh, weeks of the program uh, we believe that the ctc should be based on the potential okay it should not be based on where you are currently like that that is going to be uh, that is going to pay a certain factor in the ctc but it should also be based on how much potential that you have if you can see that you are a good learner if you are uh, someone who can solve problems if you are a quick learner then maybe your ctc will be high so it totally depends on your potential but that will be uh, like definitely way higher than your current ctc that um was helpful uh, the other thing is um, again some questions on uh, testing and you know if they are eligible for uh, um, that that is one uh, if there's any question pattern if you could suggest that and then the next one is on whether they are eligible for not if you want to take this uh, what will be the questions pattern so uh, i think i have already answered this there will be five coding questions and some mcq Okay. Uh, the next question is: If this person he works as a business technology analyst, and will he be? Uh, uh, will uh, she? Sorry, be eligible for a patch like that? Uh, maybe if you could uh, take us uh, a little bit more into who's eligible and who's not. Uh, just as a because a lot of people are asking, you know, they're from uh, different streams and whether they can join or not, or even working professionals. You know, um, if you could just take that. Okay. 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 So. Uh, first thing is that if you are able to clear the test right, that means you possess the prerequisite that we require uh, that we require in the course right so if you are able to uh, if you are able to clear the test that is enough for you okay now if you are unsure about giving the test if you have if you are if you are from computer science background or it background you are definitely eligible for the course 
if you are uh, not a student of computer science but you are working in the computer science domain then also you are eligible for the course if you are neither a student of computer science you are not uh, a working professional in computer science domain then maybe this course uh, might be difficult for you but if you are able to crack the uh, if you are able to crack the uh, entrance test and if you are also involved in uh, coding in different coding website then again you are eligible for the course okay so do appear for the test don't pre decide on whether you are eligible or not do appear for the test everyone please appear for the test thanks uh, sitesh there are a couple of questions on linkedin now uh, with regards to referrals uh, so there are there are two uh, there's one uh, guy called sanket there's another one called um, uh sorry i'll just get their name um aadhar and they want to know that if they want to specific this is the gas to referral if they want to specifically target a particular company for instance you know a uh, a google or or a facebook and you know that is what their aim is can they do that through us and you know uh, how does that work will we be able to help them get into you know specific their dream companies uh, so to speak Uh, right, right, right. So uh, I think we have actually been doing this for all the students. Like all the students who are currently the student of uh, Scalar Academy, they all have a dream company in mind, and we are already helping them achieve their goal. So we will definitely help you also. Okay, there have been instances where people have uh, joined Google, Amazon, Microsoft, to us, right? Uh, and these companies were their dream company. So. uh we actually help you 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 will also be getting a mentor so uh, this is one thing that we haven't talked about till now right so uh, apart from the course apart from the live lectures assignments and the teaching assistant you also have a mentor now mentors are people who are currently working in top tech companies okay and they they will have a one on one uh, interaction with you so each a uh, student gets a mentor with whom he can interact he can share all his professional problems personal problems he can get guidance from him right so you can assume that you have a, a, an elder sibling who is working in a top tech company and who is always available to guide you in all the aspects of software engineering okay or in all aspects of interview preparation so mentors are very very Uh, essential and helpful if you are targeting a specific company you can have a mentor who is actually working in those companies so we have mentors who are working in google or who are working in facebook who are working in netflix so there have been instances where uh, mentors have actually helped students a lot uh, in targeting or in achieving their goal they take mock interviews based on the interview process of the company uh, they tell them what is the correct way to prepare for that specific company what are what all topics are important how uh, how they can prepare for the interview and all right so mentors are very important and mentors uh, are very very essential part of this whole uh, scalar ecosystem so they will definitely help you okay thanks to teach a uh, couple of people are asking this question across linkedin and uh, even uh, youtube if we're doing live they want to understand the costing of how does it work what is it if you could maybe just take us through uh, how is it that uh, they'll be charged okay okay so uh, i think there are uh, three ways in which uh, we charge for the course right one, uh, one of them is a post paid day one of them is a uh, i think two of them are free paid day prepaid with guarantee prepaid without guarantee uh, you can actually go to the skiller site to understand more about what are the rates uh, uh, using which we charge right you have to pay if you take the post paid course you have to pay a certain percentage of your salary that you promised uh, uh, then if you take a prepaid course there are two variations there is a prepaid with guarantee there is a prepaid without guarantee so for them both of them we have different types of pricing you can uh, get the exact numbers from the scalar website uh thanks uh, we'll be posting the link of the website and uh, other test materials stuff on the uh, on both linkedin and youtube so you could probably refer that 
uh, there is a couple of questions on the similar lines, even on uh, LinkedIn, uh, where there are already interning at a certain place. They may or may not join them, and they want to understand: uh, Does it make sense for them to be part of the course? Will you know you'll be help them with their uh, maybe finding a better job or even just learning from a learning perspective? Uh, okay, uh, 2020 pass out student. Okay, so uh, I think that this course, uh, Abhiru, is for people who have at least six months of experience working in the industry uh, full time, okay. not, not as an uh, intern. Maybe you can join the next uh, batch that we'll going, we are going to have that will be specific for college students. Okay. So you can apply uh, for that batch, the next batch that, that will have. OK, uh, there, there's a the follow up to this question is when is the next uh, freshers batch starting? If you could uh, maybe give a timeline before we take the next question. Right. So that, that will probably start uh, the first week of May. Uh, or it might delay by two, three weeks. But the next batch, whatever, whenever it is long, you can also always uh, uh, like follow the Scalar Academy LinkedIn page and also follow our uh, scalar.com website for that but the next slide that we are going to have is going to be for the students okay thanks for uh the next question is basically on uh, you know they were able to crack the exam but they couldn't clear the interview what is it that we're looking for uh you know when we when we do these interviews if you could uh, maybe give them some tips or help them understand what is it that they're lacking in or what to do better uh, to be able to clear these okay okay so uh, the agenda of the interviews is to just check whether you have the aptitude uh, of problem solving or not. Okay. So in the interviews, what happens is there is an interviewer who will ask you a problem, uh, and he has <coughs> in that in that problem there is a set of observation. Uh, uh, so in the interview, it's not needed that you are you should be able to solve that problem completely. Okay. Even if you are able to figure out some of the observations that that the interviewer is pointing at then also he can just that you have that aptitude of problem solving you have practice then you are eligible to uh, to like learn all these things in six months so if if you are good at problem solving or if you have that aptitude in problem solving then you can easily clear the interview uh, thanks Ritesh. um the next question is actually might be a little relevant for people who you know see who probably uh, been in the have been practicing comparative coding for a while and they uh, you know maybe want to uh, have a different speed from compared to the class. How do we how do we make, ensure that everybody is? Um, if you could share more, throw some light on this. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So uh, Satra, the thing is that uh, e even if you have uh, done things even if you are prepared from your side, uh, but we are not sure about that. Right? So we will always make sure that you only appear in the interview when you are ready. Okay. So now, how do we decide that the student is ready or not? So first criteria is that the syllabus should be completed from our side. Okay. Now, even if you have prepared data structure algorithm, maybe you are not prepared with the design part. Right? Maybe you are not prepared with the with designing the architecture of the system. Right? Maybe you are not prepared with the design pattern. So we would want that you appear in the interview only when you are hundred percent prepared. Why? Because if you get rejected in an interview, you are blocked for six months, or in some companies you are blocked for eight to or eight months to one year or. So getting reference is not hard. Okay, we are here to to get you a lot of reference. Getting interviews is not hard. Tracking them is hard. Okay, so we want to make sure that if you are appearing for the interview, you should be at your best. So we will make sure that all the uh, essential topics are completed. You have also appeared for at least two three mock interviews with your mentor as well as with other. Uh, uh, other career coach that we have so uh, based on their mock interview rating they will they will assess you in the mock interview they will tell you whether you are prepared for appearing in the interview or not 
and if they tell us that you are prepared then we can refer you to the companies otherwise we, we will further help you with the preparation this is the next question there are a couple of people who posted who have uh, immense experience and do you think this would be helpful for them if you could uh, maybe take yes. this yes, yes. so uh, himan okay so guys himan has 12 years of experience in java development that that a lot uh, yes himan so i would say that this course is helpful for uh, if you have more than 6 months of experience no matter uh, how large it is this course is going to be helpful why because if you have 12 years of experience maybe uh, the problem solving skills the ds algo skills right uh they are not that sharp right now right because you have been involved in the industry for 12 years right so we will make sure that all those skills are sharpened after you take the course we will make sure that uh, you might be really really good in design but the course will further help you in further sharpening your skills right so you can definitely take the exam and uh, you will definitely you can upskill yourself in all these things thanks um nikhil wants to know after the exam how long will it take you guys to for us to declare the results and if you could take okay so uh, results will be declared within 2 uh, 3 days of the exam okay and uh, after the result uh, so uh, after two three days of the interview so after the exam there will be interview of the selected candidate and after the interview we will discuss the result so the current the all the timeline will be shared with you uh, on the scalar website just make sure that you are following the uh this is another yeah. interesting question they haven't been able to clear it a couple of times and they want to know how many times they can apply or keep applying you know and Like, is there like a number of times you can apply and get it if you could take this? Okay, so uh, Ankit, there is no limit on the number of attempts that you can do. You can give as many attempts as you want. Okay, you can appear in each and every test, but uh, we would recommend that uh, if you are appearing for the next test, make sure that you are well prepared and uh, like clear the test. Okay, end this cycle. Thanks, Shadesh. um there are a couple of more uh, questions um maybe if you want to take this one uh yes <laughs> so danish is saying that i have moderate level of coding skills and not getting work at current company uh, have one year of experience but not reached that sufficient level of skills in current organization will course help me yes danish i think the course will definitely help you the course is made is tailor made for you okay because you have time and you have the will to improve your skill and we are also providing all the uh, all the resources for you right so course will definitely help you uh next question ashitej uh, is uh, on basically the ctc the referral bit that we were talking about um uh i think there's a little bit of a uh, lot of people are asking on how we determine the minimum ctc and you know how do we go about the entire uh, you know referral process and uh, determining uh, uh, who gets play, you know referred that if you could maybe take uh, everybody through a little bit more in detail about how do we do the referral bit uh, it will answer uh, several more questions uh, within the list that has come up okay, okay. so to be question is what's the percentage of people getting placed with with ctc for a particular time Uh, how do you help us get in place to various organizations? Okay, so uh, to be the first batch that we launched was launched uh, in April 2019, and almost all these students of that batch have been placed. Some of these students are still in pipeline with some of the companies, but due to the current situation, uh, they have slowed down the process. Uh, so uh, we can say that most of the students. Uh, for whom the course is completed are already placed. Uh, the average CTC, and now uh, I'll quote this number: the average CTC of all the students that have been placed is 18.4 LPA, which is greater than any uh, IIT currently. 
most of these students are college students okay so they are not even experienced students more than 50 students uh, i guess around 60 students have been hired only by amazon that again is the most number of students hired by amazon from a single organization right so the placement set has been really really good okay now the next question is how do you help us getting placed to various organization so uh, guys the thing is before starting scalar academy if if you guys have seen interviewbit.com right so scalar academy started by interviewbit.com so the whole uh, like the whole business model of interviewbit.com was that we used to refer people to company okay so we have a very strong recruitment agency within the company we have contact uh, with more than 500 companies uh, in india and also across the globe so we already have this thing and uh, interviewbit.com has been running for the past 5 years so we have this very strong recruitment framework and using that recruitment framework it's very very easy for us to get you referrals uh, from different types of companies and get you placed in various organizations so that is about the referrals now uh, about helping you with the interview process so uh, like the course is specifically designed to uh, for the interview preparation and you will also be having mentors as i earlier talked about who will be preparing you for specific companies you will be having mock interviews and using the mock interviews you can judge yourself we will also provide you pointers on where you can improve so all this like the whole framework is totally designed for you to clear the interview so you get the referral you get resources and you also know how to clear the interview so you will definitely get a very good job right uh thanks sitesh the next question is an extension of the current question they want to know that if their current score will any way impact the ctc or uh, that they are looking at uh, in terms of the minimum ctc that we set uh okay okay so uh, current score will uh, not decide uh your ctc okay maybe your skills your background your current ctc uh, and your performance in the uh, academy in the initial days these things will decide your ctc thanks sitesh uh this is another interesting question uh, i don't know if you've ever answered something like this if you could uh, maybe see what they can uh, what is it that we can do okay can i complete the course within one month and get preferred if, if i am working if i am a working professional i am already preparing for a switch uh, okay so sakra uh, pegai already mentioned you that uh, the course like the course has a definite structure right so we cannot uh, like have specific classes for you right? if there are 200 students in a batch all of them will go together so it might not be possible for you to complete the whole course in a given one month but if you think that you are already prepared maybe you can join the course you can start solving the questions uh, you can uh, and you can take mock interviews and based on the mock interview we can decide whether uh, we should start referring you earlier Uh, or not like if 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 the mock interview rating suggests us that you are already prepared you don't need the course maybe we can refer you before others um the next question is by somebody called coder seeker and he wants to understand if in case he's unemployed and he he or she is unemployed uh, they know they're still trying to find a job uh, maybe not this batch uh because it's for experience level but uh, for somebody who's not able to find a job and who's just finished with degree uh, do you think for them scalar is relevant and if yes uh, how can we help them if you could uh, maybe briefly we've already kind of maybe dealt in it in some of these questions but uh, maybe if you could specifically answer from his perspective it would be helpful <coughs> okay so what about english medium college or uh okay so Uh, they code it together. Uh, the thing is, for for this course, we require at least six months of experience as a professional in the industry. If you don't have that experience, maybe you can apply for the next batch. Okay. So the next batch is going to be for people who don't have any experience. So you can apply for that.
Thanks, Jitesh. Uh, this question is from uh, LinkedIn again. Uh, Saket wants to know uh, what if someone has just a basic understanding of things like data structure. Uh, they are experienced uh, in terms of having work experience, but if they don't have uh, enough knowledge in data structures or algorithms, how can we help them? And will they be able to pass the test? Um, how do they how do they go about this? So uh, guys, for clearing the test, you need to have uh, a certain level of knowledge of basic algorithms and basic data structures. Okay. So if you have the theoretical knowledge of these things, it's very important that you should be good at implementing them. Right? Because in the test, you will have coding questions. You will have MCQs that involve calculating the time complexities or MCQs uh, that will involve basic maths. Right? So, uh, implementation is very very important if you are if you know if you have the basic knowledge of some data structures and you are also able to implement them if you are also able to solve problems using those, those data structures then you must appear for the test even if you don't have the knowledge okay even if you think even if you think that you only theoretically know or you are not really good at coding i would suggest that then also you should appear for the test because what will happen is you will get to know what type of questions are being asked. You will get to know how much preparation is needed specifically for you. And you can make your preparation plan for the next test. So do appear for the test. Don't miss the test. Because even if you appear and you don't get selected, uh, that doesn't count. Okay? It's, it's not like that you have a fixed number of attempts. Okay? You can attempt the test as many times as you want. So do attempt the test. Uh, and then check where do you stand currently, okay? How much practice or how much preparation do you need to clear the test? So that this test will also be good for your self-evaluation, okay? Thanks, Sitej. Uh, it's again a domain-specific question if you want to uh, take this ahead. Okay, so <coughs> Rakesh is asking, what about who is having Golang software development background? Let's say I have an interest in working with Golang. So, Skiller, can you provide me a job in Golang domain after getting selected? Uh, okay, so Rakesh, uh, we will be uh, we will be referring you to various jobs. Okay, uh, if if there is a, a job specific for a Golang dev developer, then uh, we will prioritize you for that job. Uh, if there isn't any job for Golang developer, then maybe we will be giving you various other opportunities. But we cannot guarantee that we will give you, we will provide you a rolling uh, job based on the need of the market. Okay, if there is a job, you will get it. If there isn't a job, then we cannot do anything, right? But if there is an opening, you will definitely get that. Uh, this is another question of somebody who's uh, had has had a one year of experience, but is currently unemployed. Can he apply for this course and? Uh, if yes, yes. Let's you apply for the course. The only requirement for the course is that you should have at least six months of experience. Doesn't matter whether that experience is uh, like you are currently working or not. If you have more than six months of experience, you can apply. The next question is uh, is on the content of the course. If you could, um, from a full stack perspective, developer perspective, if you could. Okay, so are drops in I think do do you guys teach Angular and .NET code when you talk about full stack or do you teach a certain set of technology? I want to know what tools you cover in backend, DB and front end. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, when when we talk about the front end technology, uh, the thing that we are going to dive uh, in detail is JavaScript. Okay, so we will have a lot of classes in JavaScript. We'll cover all the concepts of JavaScript and functional programming. And after you become really, really good in JavaScript, then we will cover one framework. It can be React, Redux, it can also be Node based on the requirement, the current requirement of the industry. Uh, uh, it, it can also be Angular, but most probably it's going to be React uh, or Node based. Okay. Now the thing is that since you are really good at JavaScript before we start this thing, uh, JavaScript is the basic thing that you need to know to understand any framework in detail, right? So we will make sure that you uh, that you are at a position from where 
even if you don't want to learn react or node if you want to learn any other technology based on javascript we'll make sure that you are at a position that you can do that yourself okay everything will become easy for you because we'll cover javascript in detail the core concepts of javascript okay so that will make everything easy for you from there you can take off you can select any skill you can work on it yourself if you don't uh, want to learn the technology so we are teaching now talking about the back end part uh, what tools you cover uh, so generally uh, the mvc framework that i talked about so in the mvc framework <coughs> in back end we cover spring boot why spring boot because again that is something that is uh, in requirement in current industry so it is very relevant as per the point of view of interviews and getting a job okay so we teach spring boot we teach Uh, multi-threading in detail we teach uh, building scalable system okay we also teach design patterns and we will make sure that you are able to use those design patterns while designing the system thanks atej uh, there's another question on uh, the interview that follows the uh, written test process um, they want to know what what is it that we ask um, so maybe if if there are some standard uh, topics or you know aspects that we maybe check people on if you could share those we they might help people prepare for it okay okay so uh, gautam in the interview as well we'll be asking very basic problems on array sorting or searching okay so the type of questions that you see in the test the same type of questions will be there in the interview as well the thing uh, that we are going to judge there is that whether you have that aptitude of problem solving or not whether you are able to figure out some observations whether you are able to run some examples and draw some conclusions using that right? so that is what we are going to focus the interview will also give you certain hints uh, to make sure that you are always in the right direction so we'll just make sure whether you are using those hints to solve the problem or not okay so uh, it totally boils down in judging the aptitude for problem solving that's it uh this is another question um they're saying that while they have a good background in data structures and stuff but they're not able to crack interviews of some of the companies uh, that they want to work in uh we have a program where we can help these uh, you know students with their interview process if you could help them uh, if you could probably share more details on how we do that right okay okay so uh, ganesh hmm. the thing is that in this uh, in this course we also have some of classes which are based on how to approach a problem or how to express uh, yourself in the interview okay what happens is most of the time even if you know the solution even if you are able to solve the solution and, and i have seen this happening with my friend one of my friend was really, really good in problem solving he appeared for google he solved all the problems that were asked in all the rounds he got rejected one other friend one of my colleague mate uh he was not really good in problem solving he was really good at expressing himself he was really good at clarifying things from other right so he appeared for google he solved some of the questions but he was not able to solve all of the questions he got selected right so the same thing right there is a one person who is able to solve all the problems but he is getting rejected there is another person who is not able to solve all the problems but he is getting selected so there is some difference in the communication the person who is solving the problem is not able to convey his solution is not able to uh, like what happens is most of the times if you see a problem in the interview and you have already solved it <coughs> you map that problem to the question that you have solved and you give the solution right this is not how we approach the problem in the interview or uh, this is not how you approach any problem in interview. and the first thing should be let me clarify it from the interviewer you there will be multiple aspects which will be left unclear by the interviewer intentionally right so that he he would want to judge you whether you are good at requirement gathering whether you are good at structuring an open problem okay so there are multiple such thing that we teach uh, there are multiple such thing that we will be training you on so that not only you are able to clear the interview but also you become a good software developer 
because all these skills are also required uh, required in you as a software developer because if you join a good product based company if you join a company like google they don't give you a very structured problem the problem that you solve in a good product based company is going to be a very very open problem okay so they will just uh, ask you that you have to build this feature now go and build this feature now one way is to just you go and start writing the code right? but that is not the preferred way uh the right way would be that you first structure that open problem you draw a boundary across that problem you figure out what all are the doables what all are the things that you don't need to do right and then only you will start the development so the interview process the interview preparation is totally aligned with the development process that is being done in the product based company so we will train you on all those aspects and even if you are good at problem solving but not able to crack the interview you will definitely be able to not only crack the interviews after the course but you will also become a really really good software engineer okay who can figure out the requirements who can draw a boundary across an open problem and who can then after figuring out the doable develop a scalable solution uh thanks sitej um Arjun has some questions on, you know, changing his role and how the course can help him if he wants to do that. Um, he's not very specific on what he's currently doing uh, in the support role. Uh, maybe if you could give him some advice on how he can move and how we can help him. Okay, okay. So Arjun is saying that currently I'm working in a, a MNC company as a support role. I would like to change my current role to development. Okay, uh, is this course in? Uh, yes, definitely, Arjun. <coughs> uh it for for joining any product based company as a software developer you need three things first is skill to solve problems right problem solving skills could be really really good which includes data structure and ui second is designing it if you are an experienced candidate you should be good at designing scalable systems third and most important is reference If you are currently at a support role, maybe if you are applying uh, through the company's portal or if you are applying to other uh, agencies, maybe your re resume is getting rejected, right? But if you join the course and if you do the course with hundred percent commitment, and then if you make sure that you are you have done the course with commitment, you have also performed, right? You will definitely get all types of reference. So now you have all these skills. You have problem solving. You are good with design. And you also have reference. So you can definitely switch your job from the support role to software developer role, and this has happened in the past. There were <coughs> students who were working uh, in support role as well as QA roles, manual QA roles. And currently, they are working in good product-based companies as software developer. Okay, so this has happened in past. So this can also happen with you. Thanks, Shitesh. <clears throat> um the next one is by raghavendra pratap he's concerned that his graduation marks are not good enough for him to get a good job or even clear the I mean it could help them understand how um i don't think that's really the criteria once you are part of scalar so if you could maybe enlighten them a little on this okay okay so uh, raghavendra uh, this is a truth this is a fact that none of the good companies None, none of them are going to look at your grade sheet or your mark sheet of your college or school. Okay, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have good marks in your B.Tech or in your school, don't write them in your resume. Okay, you don't need to write them. No one is going to ask you your percentage of college. What companies want is good problem solving skills, good design skills. That's it. Okay. Companies like Google, companies like Amazon, they don't even need, uh, like they they don't even care about your college. Whether you are from IIT Bombay, whether you are from a TRT college, you will be getting the same questions to solve. If you clear the interview, you get the job. Okay. Some of the companies like Apple, Google, and uh, I think Tesla, they have openly said that they don't even care about your degree. Even if you don't have the degree. Then also you can get a job. I think so. Marks in your college totally do not matter. If you have good marks, definitely write them in the resume. If you don't have marks that you can show, remove them, omit them from the resume. 
and focus on problem solving okay that is the only thing that is required as a, like the problem solving and designing these are the only thing that are required if you want to be a good software developer Thanks, Jitesh. We'll take last three, four more questions and then wrap up. It's almost going to be nine thirty. Uh, this is an interesting question. He wants to know, um, you know, in case he is not, if doesn't get uh, the minimum CTC promise, does he still have to pay the course fee? And how does that work? Maybe if you could uh, help them. Okay, okay. So, uh, Ankit, there are different types of fee models that we have. Okay, so there is a model that is without getting. If if you are taking a model that is without guarantee then we actually do not guarantee a job so if you get a job that's really good that that's good for both of us if you don't get a job then also you will have to pay but there are uh, fee structures fee model where uh, we promise you a job okay so you can go and check them out and if you are uh, if you think that uh, you are doubtful about getting the job you should definitely go for Uh, uh, we should definitely go for the type of model that is promising you a job. Now, if you have <coughs> selected a fee structure where we are promising you a job, we will make sure that you get a job that offers you more than your minimum CTC. Okay, we will keep referring you till you get such job. Uh, if you get rejected, we will analyze what are the mistakes that you are doing, uh, what are the areas where you need to improve. We will work on that. We'll make sure that your mentor, your TA, your career coach, all of them are working together to improve you, and we will make sure that you get a job. Okay, so if you get a a, a piece, if you select the piece structure where there is a guarantee of getting a job, you will get a job. Uh, thanks, Ritesh. Um, there was a question that I find I lost it. Give me two minutes. Um, there's one on. Uh, maybe we can take the one that is on LinkedIn. Uh, there's a guy called Arth. He's saying that he has two plus experience in manual testing, uh, but I'm kind of. But he's kind of losing interest in it. And does he? And he, you know, he wants to. He's thinking whether he should move into software development or coding. Uh, do you think it's a good idea? And how does he go about doing it? Uh, okay, okay, guys. Now this this is a very uh, I would say very sensitive topic for uh, maybe for lot of you. Uh, there are certain jobs that will get extended uh, after a while. Okay, there are a lot of jobs which are which involve manual intervention because everything is getting automated, right? So all type of testings will be replaced by automated testing, uh, automated testing in future. So, if you are working as a manual QA, then you should definitely start working on your development skills or your problem solving skills. So, start learning coding. Okay, if you think that you are not prepared for the course, uh, do it by yourself. Uh, start uh, taking courses uh, that are relevant for you. Start uh, start from the basic of uh, of software. Development and problem solving, but learning coding at this point of time is essential if you are from computer science background. Okay, because all type of manual job will get extincted. Okay, they all will be replaced by code written by some software engineer. So if you want to keep learning, you will have to make sure that you learn coding. Coding is very very important if you are from computer. Science. Uh, thanks, Jitesh. Uh, I think uh, there are a couple of people who joined in a little late uh, on LinkedIn and even on YouTube. Uh, their request is, if you could maybe quickly, uh, we, this will be the last question, so maybe we can just wrap up with this. If you can uh, maybe briefly just uh, um, summarize today's conversation on, uh, you know, uh, maybe um, about the course, maybe a little bit, and uh, the test that's coming up. Uh, who is it for? Uh, And just just basic summary of today's conversation. So just wrapping it up uh, for anybody who might have joined a little later. Okay, okay, cool. So uh, okay, so I will start by again iterating over what is the Scalar Academy, what is the course structure. So as I have already said, Scalar Academy is an online learning platform where they will have live classes to teach you guys all the skills that are necessary to become a good software developer. In the course. Uh, 
the course length is going to be from six, uh, like a minimum of six months. Okay, it can get extended due to some certain reasons, but the minimum length would be of six months. In the course, in the duration of six months, <coughs> we'll be covering problem solving, DS and LO. Uh, uh, this whole the data structure algorithm part will run for three months. After that, we'll cover some of the basic computer science concepts like operating system, DBMS, computer networks. Then we'll cover low-level design concepts that will include of uh, OOPs principle, UML, design patterns, schema design, uh, designing systems. Okay, then we'll also cover high level design <coughs> concepts like designing architecture of the system, scaling, sharding, uh, consistent hashing, caching, all these things. After that, we'll divide the batch into two streams based on your interest. One is going to be a backend specific, the other is going to be a full stack of front end specific. In backend, we'll dive deep into multi threading, MVC architecture, most probably uh, Spring Boot, REST API, <coughs> and also we'll make you build a scalable system. In front end, we'll cover JavaScript in detail. We'll also cover one of the frameworks of JavaScript that is in demand, like React or Node.js. Then we'll make you build a working uh, working project. And <coughs> these projects will be deployed on AWS. So we'll also Teach you all the uh, all those skills as well, right? Deploying and testing and logging, all those things will be taught. <coughs> so this is all about the course. Now in this course, there are three main uh, people who will be interacting with you. Uh, so actually, four main people will, who will be interacting with you. They will be instructors who will take your live lecture. So there will be different instructors who will be teaching you at different point of time. Uh, and the lectures will be two hour long. We'll have lectures on alternate days. Then we have TAs. TAs are people who are working at different companies, some good companies, uh, and who are really, really good at coding themselves. So they will be helping you out with the implementation details of the problems that we are teaching. They will help you out in all the doubts regarding implementation, or if you if you are getting any errors in your code, if you are getting any exceptions, you can ask them. So there is a whole framework built in our site where you can raise the request and the TA will resolve the request. He will go on with a video call with you to explain uh, your doubts or to resolve your doubts. Okay? Then we have mentors. You will get one mentor each <coughs> and the mentor is going to be there uh, throughout the course. You will have one-on-one -on -one session with the mentor. You can share all your personal and professional Issues. If you want to prepare for a specific company, he will help you out. He will take your mock interviews. Okay, so you can just assume that he's an elder sibling who is working in uh, a good top tech company. Okay, and he's there to help you out. Uh, then we have <coughs> uh, a success manager. Uh, he will be a guy from the interview team who will be in constant touch with you. Who will uh, talk with you regarding your uh, how things are going, whether you are liking the live sessions or not, uh, whether you are able to solve the assignments or not, whether you require any special assistance uh, in any of the area. So there will be a guy who will help you out throughout the course from interview. After the course is completed, you'll also have mock interviews. So there is a complete framework built in the site where you can have mock interviews with people who are working at the top tech company. So if you if you are preparing for a job in Amazon, we will arrange mock interviews with people who are actually working in Amazon. Okay. If you are working, if you want to get a job in Google, we will arrange interviews with people who are actually working in Google. So this is all about the course and the people with whom you will be interacting with. So now since this is a course of six month duration, and covering all these things in six months is very hard, right? So uh, to cover them in details, you actually require some knowledge, some basic knowledge, some prerequisite knowledge. Uh, and just to test that, we'll have in the entrance test, uh, the test date and time, uh, you guys already know, you can check that out in the uh, website as well. The test will consist of five coding problems and some MCQs. The coding problems will be from easy to medium level. There will be one problem that might be hard, uh, but make sure that <laughs> you don't waste your time on that problem. If you are not prepared, you first attempt all the problems that lie in your domain, okay? So that, uh, that you are comfortable in solving. 
you attend those problems first and then you move on to the harder problem the mcqs will be based on basic math number theory logarithms and calculating the time complexities of function so just brush up on these concepts now the question is uh, uh, this course is going to be for people who have at least 6 months of experience in the industry okay full time experience not the internship experience the question whether you should appear for the test or not even if you are not prepared even if you are not uh, having the relevant work experience even if you are not from the relevant background i would recommend everyone to appear for the test because then you can evaluate yourself right you can see if you are able to solve the problems or not uh, how much preparation do you need how much practice do you need to solve the problem and then you can prepare yourself for the next entrance examination there is no limit on how many uh, entrance examinations you can appear for you can appear for as many exams as you want so uh, if there is a liberty you should appear for all of them right just make sure that you are appearing for all the exams and there will be two <coughs> two tests uh one test will be on saturday the other will be on sunday uh if if you appear for any one of them that is enough okay any one of them is enough if you appear for both of them <coughs> then we will consider that the result that is that has the maximum score so the best of two will be considered if you are coding on some other websites like code chef code forces top coder upload their link okay if if your test doesn't go well we will uh, fall back to your other coding profile if you have done well there that will be considered okay so after the test there will be some personal interviews if you if you get selected in the test then you will be called for interviews uh, these interviews will have the similar type of problems that you have seen in the test and Uh, the the event of the interview is just to check whether you have that basic aptitude for problem solving or not okay so just prepare well make sure uh, to brush up your concept make sure you are good at writing codes okay use these two three days uh, in practicing uh, writing codes and please do appear for the test now one very important thing very important announcement that the platform is uh, the platform has a very very good technology very very good algorithms to detect plagiarism okay even if you copy a code from internet or if you copy a code uh, from other student or if you copy a code from any resources that is available that will be caught if you are caught doing plagiarism you will be blocked for appearing from uh appearing in the upcoming test okay so make sure that you do not copy you do not cheat in the test okay if you don't cheat and if you maybe are not able to qualify you can appear for the next test if you cheat and if you are caught then you will be blocked from having uh from appearing in the entrance test for for your life okay so that will be a very very bad decision if you cheat so please make sure that you do not cheat we have actually blocked a lot of students in the past as well and now they are requesting us to remove the blockers but that is not possible so make sure that you don't cheat okay uh, be be truthful uh, do as much as you can if you can't do that you can maybe improve yourself and uh, appear for the next If you want to prepare for the test, you can go to lead code. You can attempt the easy problem on arrays, sorting, uh, and searching, or you can also go to the interview bit website and you can select uh, the problems of array sorting and searching, and you can solve the easy problem. Okay, <coughs> so that's the whole summary. Thanks, Tatej. Uh, that was very helpful. Uh, thank you to everybody who joined the webinar. Uh, the the video of the webinar will be available on YouTube. You can uh, refer it later. Uh, our website and social media platforms give all the information that you may not need in case that you may need uh, for the entrance exam. Uh, all the best. Uh, we also have a video that we've put up which gives. Uh, 
uh, some test, uh, you know, academy test preparation material. You could refer that. Um, all the best, and uh, hopefully we'll see you be part of Scalar soon. Uh, good night, everybody. Have a have a safe time.